uh, 2024 is a start of a new year. And when we say 2024, it's another year for Pinoy Liga Basketball. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat mula dito sa loob ng Enderan Gymnasium here in Makili Hill and Taguig. This is your 2024 calendar year of your Pinoy Liga and we will start with our first game of our our double header of today. It's going to be a good one. The champions of the UAAP, the Dallas Hall Green Archers, will match up against the champions of the NCAA, the San Beda Red Lions. Magandang araw, Luzon, Desires, Mindanao, and all over the world. My name is Al Vintanyada, and this is a special game, and why not have a special analyst for us today? We have a good friend of ours and the Woj of Philippine Collegiate Basketball, Naveen Galani. Uh, Naveen, uh, Happy New Year, and... <laughs> Good morning, sir. Happy New Year, Coach. Medyo nahiya naman ako doon. Medyo napablush ako. I have to take a moment now. Just joking. Um, hello to all our viewers today. Exciting matchup, Coach. The two champions of their respective leagues. Two, you know, two teams that are known for being competitive. No matter the tournament, no matter the situation. So I'm excited to call this game with you today. Yes, and right now, let's take a look at around the socials. Then uh, naging trending nga tayo dito, Naveen, because of this matchup between the champ versus champions. And uh, look, at, we'll take a look at some of the comments here. And one name that you see there is Jacob Cortez. But Jacob Cortez, unfortunately, will not be here to play for his new school right now, Naveen. And can you just give us around something, some some uh, inputs on the uh, the transfer of Jacob Cortez? Yes. So before a few before going to La Salle, Jacob called up his coaches, called up the managers of San Beda, and informed them of his decision to go to La Salle. He felt that he won a championship in San Beda and he wanted to try and do the same in the UAAP for the school that his father, the great Mike Cortez, played for. And today, Jacob will not be in action. He's in Sierra oh, celebrating okay. with his San Beda teammates. But who knows? Maybe in a few weeks, we might see Jacob play for DLSU in this tournament once everything is settled. And he might not be the only new DLSU face in action. Well, uh, that will be an exciting time as a... Yeah. Also, this is the debut game of De La Salle here in our next Man Cup. At uh, sigurado, eh, excited na lahat dito sa loob ng Enderan Gymnasium. At also, may mga nanonood sa atin through our YouTube channel, Pinoy Liga TV. And also, broadcasted through our newest broad, uh, media partner, Aliu Channel 23. And let's now call on our starters with Ran Moraleda on the call. Ran? And 
And now uh, the starters have been called out. And uh, nakita natin dito, uh, Maynard Sampuya, Joe Celso, Brian Sahonia, Penny Estacio. And uh, so to complete uh, the five-year, eh, kasama nila si Lopez. Ngayon, dito for De La Salle, you see some players that are going to be key factors possibly in the next season. And uh, no, Matthew Rubico, one of those guys. And what can you say about this lineup right now, uh, Naveen, of De La Salle here in the, uh, the Pinoy Liga Next Man Cup? Well, you said it, no, Coach Alvin. Rubico is someone to watch out for. We see Sahonia miss a shot. Now, there's a void left in the point guard position for the Green Archers with the departure of Evan Nelly and to some degree Mark Nonoy as well. Now, there are a lot of young playmakers coming in in Season 87 before some of the other guys come in in Season 88. So, who from the young guys can step up and take that position? Rubico is one of the options. Yes, aside from that, another player that uh, yeah, we are going to watch out for is this guy, Penny Estacio, which played last year for our Pinoy Liga Collegiate Cup for uh, the team of De La Salle. Ngayon, nandito na siya sa San Beda. Exactly. And you know, to some degree, it's a homecoming for Penny. He was in San Beda early in his career. I'm sure he's happy to be home as a Red Lion. And he's going to have the opportunity to show what he's capable of. So is this guy, JC Makalalag. He's coming into this game. Listen, he played big time minutes in the UAP finals a few weeks ago. Yes, and uh, yun, yeah, uh, uh, he is going to be a an expected player here. Uh, somewhat like yung puesto na ginagawa ni Escandor. Gayon yun yung magiging puesto nito. But right now, a quick timeout by Coach Andre Santos and the rest of the San Pedro Red Lions. They are down here 7 0. And uh, take a look. We take a look at some uh, trivia time here as we take a look at the championships of the LSU. Nakita naman natin dito na Vin, 10 championships in the UAP. Dagdag mo na dyan yung uh, kaka-champion niya lang nila. And five from the NCAA. And that is a lot of championships for the, the, the DLSU. Exactly. That's why when people say when you're in LaSalle, championship or bust, this is why. Yes. This is because this is the kind of success that program is used to. And you can say the same for San Beda in the NCAA. Yes, oh yeah, yeah. It's ilang dalawa yung um, isa sa mga schools na maraming championships in the college ranks. So this is going to be a fun matchup as Lopez finally breaks the silence for San Beda. And you know, Alvin. Before the game, kinausap ko si Coach Andre, who is right now handling the reins for San Beda in this tournament. In sabi nila, they know that Penny Estacio is a capable scorer, a capable shooter. But yung gusto nila develop kay Penny further, as we see Agunane miss a wide open layup, is yung playmaking abilities niya. And in San Beda's last possession, three pointer here, it's good. And like you said, the shooting of San Beda is right there. But back to Penny, the possession beforehand, passed up the open three, gave it to his teammate. That's the kind of playmaking they want to see him improve on. Oh, lalo na eh, for San Beda. They're missing the services of the Kalimag brothers. And according to Coach Andre, nga, eh, both players just came back yes. from the holiday break. So, But expect that these two players will be playing in the next game. And mukha namang hindi pa nila kailangan ang mga uh, sila RC, tsa, uh, si Richie and Lopez. He, that's a heat check shot, no good from three. Now, Lopez is one of the players that San Beda is high on for the future. Didn't play a lot of minutes this past season. As we see, an easy 3-0 on zero break here for the Red Lions. Estacio gets his first shot. But Lopez, that's a name that the Red Lions fans should watch out for. He's going to have bigger responsibilities moving forward for this team. It's in, First, it's a 7-0 run. Now, it's an 8-0 run naman for the San Beda Red Lions. And, sabi nga natin dito, Naveen, this matchup is a going to be the matchup between the high scoring high scoring octane of San Beda while for ito naman sa uh, La Salle is their height eh. ang lamang sila dito yes. because of their two FSAs and Brian Sahonia the 
the national team member for 3x3 in the last uh, SEA Games. Also, it's worth noting, no, Coach Alvin, uh, how do you counter height? One, with speed. Two, by spreading the floor. And beating that height with shooting. Right now, San Beda is also forcing turnovers. Lasal needs to take care of the ball better. As Rubico, wow! And Matthew Rubico, it's a three ball there. Ending the, that silence of an 8-0 run for San Beda. At kaya ilang mga dito sa height itong uh, Lasal. Also, with itong uh, San Beda without Bismarck Lina here. Yes, exactly. Bismarck Lina, according to Coach Andre, still recovering from a minor injury. So we should see him back in time in maybe a few weeks as Sahonia misses the floater. Oh, great effort. Great effort. Joe Celso inside. And uh, you saw the maturity there of Brian Sahonia. Isa sa mga natutunan niya during his stint with the national team. With a uh, with a three x three, and uh, you you've seen the this guy uh, score a lot. I remember uh, in the last uh, Pinoy Liga Collegiate Cup, he went berserk in one of the games. The sunod sunod the three points, and now, ayon you expected sa kanya here for San Beda. You know Henry Agunane, we've now seen him miss two shots near the rim, and the athleticism is there, the height is there. The potential is there, but of course, kailangan pa niya ng polishing ng konte, Coach Alvin. And if he's going to be the FSA of DLSU in season 87 of the UAP, he will need to work on that polishing very fast. Yes, uh, and right now, ito Rubico will try his luck from three once again. No good. Celso with the rebound. Sahonia, bring down the ball. He's matched up against. Uh, ito si Prince Alau, a, a new entry here. And uh, tongayon lo. Oh, Lesiones, pinasok na dito. And that's an offensive foul called on Lesiones. Good defense there by Matthew Rubico. Superb start to this game for Rubico. Hitting outside shots, playing with good pace, playing with good defense, forcing a couple of turnovers. Now, right now, you have to say, he might be the favorite in that starting position. And, uh, yun, narinig ka doon, Matthew Rubico with a teardrop there. And he was a highly touted recruit out of Lyceum High School. Coach Alvin, and he didn't play right away in season 86 of the UAAP, but that extra year of training and conditioning will help him prepare in time for when he does enter the league. And siyempre, makakasama mo ba naman si Evan Nele, di ba? You learned from that guy, and uh, you will really blossom into a fine point guard. And now, ito Makalalag moving inside, Makalalag. And another shot for Makalalag, four points now for JC Makalalag. If you're a LaSalle fan, you want to see that kind of aggressiveness from Makalalag. He is technically the vet of this team in Pinoy Liga right now. So he should have the green light to go hard as much as he wants to. And right now, ito nga, yung silang dalawa ni uh, Rubico, you know, ang uh, gumagawa dito, the backcourt tandem. And Celso, that's a foul. And he will shoot to the free throw line. Ito ah, pali. palitan ng mga tao dito. Ito, platoon substitution for Lasal and Wangko Alian. Hukom and uh, uh, Daha will check in. May iwan si Prince Alaw dun sa lo dito sa loob. While for uh, San Beda, they will uh, have uh, uh, lahat ito, lesiones. Nandiyan pa rin sa loob, Penny Estacio. Kanina nilabas nito ni Lesiones, binalik na ulit si Penny Estacio. And of course, it's good to get Penny these reps early on because yun nga, they're expecting him to carry a lot of responsibilities for the team in Season 100. A San Beda team that, sh despite the departure of Cortez, should still be considered maybe the favorite to win the NCAA. Yeah, one of the favorites yan for the NCAA because, syempre, marami pa rin nagsasabi. You have CSB. You have uh, other, yeah. yeah, EAC was blossomed well under the system of Coach Gerson Cabiltes. That's an offensive foul first on uh, Henry or uh, Brighton Bright Wanko. Wanko. Yes, but uh, you were saying that in this coming NCAA, you, you've seen a lot of teams improve well. Yes, exactly. And back to this LaSalle team, no, I'm very curious about the Nwanko versus Agunane situation. Who will play better? Because both guys are eligible to be the FSA of DLSU yes. in Season 87. Bright was the FSA when they won in Season 86, but Agunane also is a solid contender as Estasio is fouled shooting a three. And if you're Ethan Alian right there and you're trying to prove 
to the green archers that you want a roster spot for season 87, you have to avoid mistakes like fouling a jump shooter from downtown. Yes, and daming uh, maraming point guards eh. Then itong uh, si la coach Topek, si la coach Oliver dito sa lineup nila but you can see here that the lineup here is very stacked for this coming season. Pinaghahandaan din nila yung pagpasok nga nito ni Jacob Cortez yes. which we will see after this coming season kasi hindi pa because of the eligibility. Yes, it's also worth noting the departure of Evan Nedi, the departure of Mark Nolan and I believe after Season 87, Joshua David might be done with his playing years as well. So there's, there are openings for the guard rotation of DLSU. And these young guys have the opportunity to prove early on that they deserve those spots. It's, it's very uh, exciting to see, hopefully, uh, for another championship. Because eh? UAAP, some teams, we all know that are getting also stronger. UP is getting stronger. Yes. Uh, we all know that Ateneo will come back stronger this next season. And we know that USC is on the way up. Yes, USC is there. UE is a, a dark horse. Uh, those eight teams are very exciting. And you, even though, yes, uh, we heard that we, they lost Kian Baklan, but still they are a very good, strong team here. Absolutely. A lot of talent. Adamson also, you can count them out, especially yes. with Coach Nash's development program. And that's a steal here. Daha 4-3. That's too strong. Estacio gets the ball to Lesiones. Mina, three ball on the way. That's money. And see, that's how quickly momentum can change in basketball. Las all has a three-on-one break. They settle for the three, doesn't go in the other way. San Beda gets an open three, they make it. And now Hukom will try his luck. And it's, it's starting to rain three balls here. Uh, David. Ito yung maganda dito sa parehas na kumanan. You've seen the development of their three-point shots falling here. And this could be something good for the upcoming UAP and the NCAA season for these teams. Exactly. And you know, the talent in college basketball now, Coach Alvin, I think more than, you know, in a long, long time at least, it is at an all-time high, in my opinion. Talent all over the place. Here's one of them. And now Prince Alaw. <laughs> The former national team uh, member, Gilas Ju uh, Juniors squad. Exactly. Batang Gilas. I believe he was in the same Batang Gilas team with the likes of Seven Gagate, Luis Pablo, Josh Coronel, Mason Amos, Jared Bahay. And those players are already uh, either in the UAP or will try to go into the UAP. As you were saying, Jared Bahay is one name that we're excited to know where he will play next year. And that's a score by Zed Tulye. Coach Oliver Bunyi, two sport time, it's still a two point lead for the DLSU Green Archers. Kanina nakita natin yung tong championships na UAP and NCAA in itong De La Salle. Now let's take a look at the championships of the San Pedro Red Lions. You take a look. That is a lot of championships. 23 NCAA championships and also count that two PCCL championships for the San Pedro Red Lions. And you can see that the date 2023 in the year 20, uh, 23rd championship for the year 2023. Exactly. Just a program that is used to success, a program that likes to compete every season, and a program that will always be considered one of the best in Philippine basketball. And you do have co coaches there that are young, but do have winning tradition in San Beda with Coach Yuri Escueta. You do have Coach Andre Santos, who coached one time for San Beda nung wala, ito si Coach Yuri Escueta, and they got the win there. So, these are coaches that loves to win and really wants to win for, the, for San Beda as that drive goes out. 
Shout is at 14 seconds here. Great game so far. Great pace, great flow, a lot of offense, some defensive possessions too. High scoring. Right now, Daha missed a three earlier. And Wonko, hindi niya range yan. Eto, range si Prince Ala for three. No. Now you're seeing here, the ito si Bright and Wonko, or and even Henry Agunani are stepping out of the painted area. Do you think that is the right thing that these two guys should do? Go outside whenever they have their offense, or they, should they be inside to just possibly get those balls if in case they miss? Well, you know, it's a pro and con kind of thing, right? Because if they're outside there, you can run a lot of actions through them, like dribble handoffs, pick and roll plays, and also that allows more spacing for the guards to penetrate for kick out opportunities. But as we see a careless turnover here by San Beda, but yes, exactly. Looks like a mistake that will lead the ball yes. back to La Salle. But you know, it wouldn't surprise me if eventually we see plays also where Noanko and Agunani get the ball closer to the rim in the post. But that's modern basketball, right, Coach Alvin? Yes, Handoff, oh. spacing. A lot of big men ha ha have already tried to move from outside of that painted area. I mean, Sanya Nakaro, Nano the the small guys are the ones in the painted area. But right now, that is an offensive foul once again, and that's on Prince Halao. And you know, that's a great sequence right there for Estacio, the former Green Archer, now Red Lion. His pass led to the recent turnover for San Beda. And right there, he makes up for it right away by causing the offensive foul from more Alao. Those are the effort plays that you need to make as a lead guard for a team. And they expected uh, uh, that Penny Estacio will be one of those guards to lead the San Beda squad in the upcoming NCAA Season 100. With the loss of Jacob Cortez. Now Prince Alao moves in. Goes to inside. A nice pass. Ethan Aliano. Oh, that's a block. But there's a foul. Good pass that time by Bright Noanko. A lot of FSAs early in their career, when they get the ball that close to the rim, they're thinking I'm going up to score. And that's when they get the ball poked away from them. That's when they lose the handle sometimes. Or they miss a shot flat out. There he was patient and found an open guy underneath the rim, leading to free throws. And now Ethan Alian. Yeah, I've seen uh, I've seen this guy Ethan Alian. This is uh, he's more of a spot up shooter, but he wants to at least see more uh, of the drive, eh? uh, diba? Dito sa sa basket, because he's more of a spot up shooter for the DLSU Green Archers in the last Collegiate Cup. Exactly, and you know he was part of that LSGH team with Gagate, Pablo, Coronel. Really a solid guard, and I think given the reps, he has the chance to really show what he's capable of as a basketball player. Estacio gets the ball. Pass to Zedetulli. That is a steal. Drive. Allahu! Nice block by Brian Saonia. Daha. That's a steal by Zedetulli. Fast break. Here we go. Estacio. Three. No. Rebound by Mina. Mina outside to Brian Sahonia. Three is good. Finally, Brian Sahonia getting in the scoring department here for San Beda. The game is tied at 22. Like we said earlier, Coach Alvin, great flow so far to this matchup. Last 11 seconds here in the first quarter. Alian moves in, pass. Three ball, Daha. That's short. And 0.4 of a second remaining here. This will be last shot time for San Beda as we end our first quarter of play in this battle of the two champions. We are tied at 22 when we come back with second quarter of action here in your Pinoy Liga Next Man Cup Season 2.
Order has started here in this matchup between the NCAA champions and Belo Red Lions and the UAP champions, the Dallas All Green Archers, Alvin Tanyala together with Naveen Ganalani. And Naveen, that first quarter, what can you say about how things run as uh, we are tied at 22? Great flow, great pace, but neither team, team did a good job taking care of the basketball. That's why we saw quite a few turnovers, easy transition opportunities, open three-pointers. I felt LaSalle got off to a good start. Great minutes from Matthew Rubico, but then San Beda doing a solid job staying in the contest and coming back with their three-point shooting. Now Ogana gets the first two points to go to start the quarter here for De La Salle. Daisy Makalalag together with Jacob Spike, asama nila, Matthew Rubico, and that is Henry uh, Agunane on the floor. While for San Beda, they have Benistacio, Maynard, Sonkuya, Lopez, Sahonia, and Torres to complete the five. Sahonia for three. That's the second three ball of Brian Sahonia. Six points for Brian Sahonia. And great play that time by Penny Estacio getting into the paint, throwing three defenders and kicking it out despite the short window to an open Brian Sonia for the triple. And JC Makalalag, oh, that's a clean steal there by Penny Estacio. Estacio, extra pass, basket, plus the foul. And Lopez now continuing his uh, good game here. Eight points now for him. And once again, another great play by Penny Estacio, the former green archer. You know, Coach Alvin, I have to wonder, is there extra motivation for Penny going up against his former team? You know, we have to remember before he left LaSalle, there were talks that maybe he might not make the lineup for season 86 if he had stayed. So that might have been motivation for him to leave. And now that he's facing his former team, my extra oomph, eh, you know? Oh, yun nga. Kanina, nagbibiro pa sila dito ni JC Makalalag. And that is a pushing foul on Maynard Sungkuya, the former FEU Tamarao turned red line. And just to add to Nestasio, he's playing not by thinking, okay, ako yung score. I'm going to take the ball, I'm going to take control. He's doing it in a way that he's drawing the attention of the defenders and finding opportunities for his teammates, which what we said earlier is what the San Beda coaching staff wants him to do. Now, let's see if uh, De La Salle can get a basket here. Handoff, three ball, no good. And Gaspai gets the board, but there's a foul. And below, I think it's on uh, Penny Estacio called for the foul there. Matthew Rubico back in the contest now. The South played their best basketball in this game with him in action. I like this matchup right now of Rubico versus Estacio, two talented young guards in college basketball. These are the future of the collegiate basketball. And Henry Agunane scores. And that time, you see how Agunane can really be impactful when he's patient, not looking to make a move right away, despite the double team able to use that height to score off the glass. Uh, Ryan Sahonia, nice pass, Joe Celso. And that thing, pag nakikita mo si Brian Sahonia, Naveen, usually when he finds that open lane, yes. he usually goes up for the shot, but now he's looking for that extra pass to his other teammates. And you know, that's a very good developmental process for him because yun nga, he has good size for a guard slash wing in college basketball. We know he can hit three-pointers. We know he can score really quickly. But if he can use those, those qualities of his game, the athleticism, the size, the speed, to draw defenders and create opportunities for teammates, that's going to give Coach Yuri and his staff such a solid weapon, especially in the NCAA. He yeah, is solid weapon talaga. I don't see... Uh, Brian Sahonia, he can play the two, he can play the three, and even the four. So, even and the one, no? Even the one. Good na ng sapatos din yun today, eh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> A GT cut. The pink. 29-26, the score. Inside. And then they are going to... May halo ng gigil, eh, sa ilalim. Finding that mismatch inside. Exactly. against Joe Celso. Exactly, and that time, JC Makalalag also needs to put a little more touch in that pass as we see a foul here on De La Salle University. And there's a foul, a uh, foul again, uh, upon the inbound. Brian Sahonye. My vet. Oh, veteran, oh, veteran move. Uh, that's a veteran 
play there. And also, that's smart because now Lasal has 14 fouls, which means the rest of the way, free throws for San Beda. It's maaga pa, maaga, maaga pa to. Half, yes. And now, Brian Saonia, you can see now him playing the point guard here. Brian, that shot, no good. Ogana gets the ball. Ogana moves in. Ogana blocked by Lopez. And you can see Lopez not just playing offense, but also defense. And Lopez, there's a foul downstairs. Oops. And the referees doing a good job, quickly trying to control this situation right now. Of course, in the game of basketball, sometimes tempers can flare. Yes, and you can see uh, Penny Estacio being, being that guy na, syempre, kaibigan pa rin niya. Tapos sila Jake Caspay. Mm -hmm. And uh, even, uh, even the referee said that, yung know, sabi ng referee is, uh, chill lang tayo. Uh, chill lang tayo. And he even thought that Penny Estacio will be going after Jake Caspay. Pero nung nakita niya, niyakap lang niya. Yes. Okay. Yes. The, the history between Penny Estacio and Lasal nandun pa rin eh. No? Yes, of course. And a lot of these guys are friends with each other. Yes. You know, off the Tama. court. They, they want to hang out. And look, listen, Coach Alvin, January pa lang, malamig pa sa labas. Medyo chill pa yung <laughs> weather natin. So chill din, dapat muna tayo. Wala pang summer. Oh, take note. Kasi simula pa lang ng ating calendar year for your Pinoy Liga Cup. And we're so happy to have you here watching through Facebook. Also, uh, through our newest broadcast partner, Aliu Channel 23. Absolutely. We also want to thank our friends of the tournament like si Shawarma Shack yes oh, oh, marami salamat din to our sponsors syempre the Shawarma Shack uh, Sticko Kickstart Kick Coffee Kickstart Coffee syempre Sarap smart yan. syempre and uh, also slick tight and uh, yes the, here we go let's take a look at the lineup here of uh, De La Sala for the season and you can see here some names uh, JC Makalalag is there Ethan Alian is there uh, Rubrico is there but mm -mm. What's missing there is still Jacob Cortez is still not yet there. Wala pang kasiguraduhan if he is going to play, but hopefully we get to see him play here. Absolutely. And there are some other names worth noting here also, Coach. Deron Mitchell, LaSalle's supposed one-and-done prospect last season who got injured, had the back injury, couldn't play. Let's see if he can make it in time before the season ends, the Pinoy Liga Collegiate Cup, if he recovers in time. Also, James Nakwa is someone in the DLSU lineup he is coming from Australia. I was told by one of the LaSalle coaches before the game na yun nga, he might make it here by the end of the month. We shall see. That's a name to watch out for. EJ Goliena wasn't able to play today dealing with an illness, but he should be back soon. Earl oh, Abadam still yes. coming back in, uh, to town in a few days from now. So H How about Isaiah Phillips? Oh, yes. He's actually arriving from the United States tonight. Mm, okay. So he should be available for LaSalle's next game. And... With Kuya Ben Phillips of the Green Archers now moving on to the next stage of his career, LaSalle will need another veteran presence like Kuya Ben to lead the locker room. And I say I might be able to do that. And I think Ben will, might at least just help out with, uh, with the coaches here. Yes. Because being one of the Kuya Ben, yes. uh, still Mike Phillips is still there for next year. Of course. Uh, KQ is still there. Of course. Escandor is still there. Of course. <laughs> Aaron Bunsalida also. Yes. Another solid prospect. He is in Davao right now, but he should be back to play in this tournament. A lot and of players, a lot of players. And also Santi Romero, who is actually in the La Salle bench right now. Let's listen in to the announcement here. All right, so tatlong tawag doon, Naveen. First, that's a, uh, yung first call is a foul there on Jake Caspay on that drive by Lopez. Mm -hmm. So that's a clear foul. And then the second motion nito uh, si Lopez because of the, uns uh, that's an unsportsmanlike foul. And then naglabas pa kasi na si Iko, ito si Jake Caspay. That's why it's a technical foul. So that's why th this is going to be a free throw. That's a tech. This is the technical. This is the technical on uh, Gaspay. Uh, on Gaspay. Yung free throw kanina mm -hmm. na Estacio. Ito naman yung two free throws for Lopez for that uh, shot. That's a miss. So that's zero of two already for San Beda. Tapos mamaya tatawid tayo sa kabila for the unsportsmanlike foul. 
Exactly. Now let's see if Lopez can make this free throw. He yes, does. he makes that. One out of three. For the Red Lions, correct. Yes. But you know, I always say, Coach Alvin, when it comes to college basketball, two stats I look at right away. Turnovers and free throw shooting. Yes, important. Exactly. People don't realize how often those two departments lead to wins or losses for teams in college basketball. It's the little things. Uh, so, you know, so you know, clear na rin. Mayroon pa rin tayong three minutes cool-off period for San Beda. So, that's why Gabi uh, Gabieta, another new player here. Uh, check back in, Jake Caspay. First free throw. And Jake Caspay came from ICC. Uh, ICC, one of their main guys. Exactly. And he actually played towards the end of the Pinoy Liga yes. tournament. Yes. Uh, last season, no? And you can see the potential is there, that height, that length, the athleticism. Let's see if he can polish his game enough to maybe earn a roster spot for Coach Topex in Season 87. At lumaki, ito si Jake Gaspay. Yes. Kasi nung una natin nakita to enjoying the Collegiate Cup, he was like a very uh, thin uh, prospect. Now he has, look at his arms. Mm -hmm. Ang laki ng build eh, nito ni Jake Gaspay. And hopefully he can earn somewhat like what he did with Coach Topex here by Enoch Valdez yes. for Lyceum. Let's yes. see, hopefully this goes for Jake Gaspay here with De La Salle. Joe Celso, no good. Rebound. Grab by Agunane. And you could see the Agunane factor right there. Mid-range floater. Na yun, but Agunane's length still bothering the shot attempt. A pass here. Three ball at the corner. That's good. <laughs> And Boris Marasigan was supposed to play his final season of high school with San Beda two seasons ago. But he's now a green archer and he's starting to trim down, lean down a bit. The, pro the potential is high for him in DLSU. And you can see a lot of uh, similarities between these two squads. Maraming players galing ng San Beda naglipat sa La Salle. Exactly. And also in the same way, the La Salle na lumipat sa San Beda. Estacio, one of them, of course. And going back to San Beda, the excitement for what they're going to have in Season 100, no? Of course, very, very promising. We mentioned si Sahonia. We mentioned the Kalimag brothers. Bismarck Lina, not playing today because he's recovering from an injury. But he has a lot of potential. Penny Estash, and then you still have some of the holdovers from the championship team, like Andrada. It's a loaded team. Yes, oh, Jamal Puno is there also. Uh, even though nga nawala, ma, nawala na si Jacob Cortez, nawala na rin, ma, graduate na si Ethan Alvano, di ba? So a lot of players, but these players, eh, napagandaan na nito ni Coach uh, Yuri Escueta, yung pagkawala nga nila. Yes. And one more player to watch out for is si Nigel Gonzalez. Then. Yes, oh, oh, Nigel Gonzalez. And you can see them, the, the, the losses. Eh, ito na yung mga additions nila getting ready for those uh, guys. And Lashones shot, no good. And Lashones will shoot two. And ang ganda ng decision niya that time. Noticing the defender was on his hip. So rather than going straight continuously, stop, allow the defender to hit him just enough to draw the foul, put up the shot, and get free throws. And those are the kind of skills that young players work on nowadays. And that's why these players develop so quickly. Now Lashones will shoot two free throws here. First free throw is good. The lefty for San Beda. Alam mo, Coach Alvin, madali na din for young players to really develop fast now because of YouTube because of the NBA games available yes. online and on their phones, highlights, right? So really, if you're a young basketball player, you can find anywhere to find like role models and ways to improve your game. So always look to improve, young players. Yes, a lot have really improved in their game. Kanina, pinag-usapan natin, Brian Saonia, not just scoring but now orchestrating. A lot of players have really stepped up here. Inside, Boris Marasigan. Well, shoot too. And great decision that time by Makalalag. He knew that Marasigan's effort play kept that ball alive after he missed the shot. So when he had the opportunity to penetrate again, he looked for the open Marasigan, cutting baseline, rewarded him for his effort, and now Boris gets two free throws. Boris Marasigan. First free throw. This is Boris Marasigan. I see in him a very young Wakiman. Uh, 
Manuel, something like that. He could be that guy for this squad. I think he has a little more skills than Waki, but of course, can he bring the... <laughs> the leadership, eh? Yung, the, That's how we'll call it, leadership. <laughs> oh, okay. Kasi we all know what Waki Manuel brought to the team, even though he's not playing a lot of minutes, exactly. but his veteran leadership on the bench. Yeah. Diba? Natin yun. Now, hopefully this is what Boris Marasigan can bring to the table here. And to Waki's credit, he earned the trust of all of his yes. teammates in that locker room. Kuyang kuya, eh, si Waki doon. O'Brien, Saonia. Watch Agunani on defense here. Just how he's going to constantly move. And that time, forcing the turnover. Teruel. And this, this guy, Teruel, is a very raw project. But if you can remember one raw project that turned out to be a good one for San Beda right now is uh, Clifford Hopia. Yes, Hopia exactly. is a, a very tall guy, player right now in the PBA. But you saw him blossom well. And uh, hopefully Teruel can be that guy also for the San Beda squad. If there's one thing San Beda is very good at, from the high school ranks pa lang, it's developing basketball players. Yes. From the time of Coach Atoba Dolato, exactly. Coach JB Season, yan, marami talagang coaches ang nakapag-develop ng young and up-and-coming players in the juniors ranks. And now here is Rubico. This guy is one of those guys in the juniors that have stepped up well. Traveling violation called on Jake Gaspai. Great decision that time by Marasigan to get the ball, make that one extra pass. And Gaspai had the open three-pointer. I think he wanted to attack and penetrate. But at that point, you have that open three. You know, it's not a bad idea to take it. Medyo, ano lang siya eh. Nagdalawang isip pa eh. If he can uh, take that shot. Three ball. That's money for Gambietta. And if the first quarter was fast-paced, good rhythm, this one is a little more slow it down, grind it out. We're seeing more post-action now for the LaSalle big man. Agunanan, though, has to do a better job taking care of the ball. Makalalag, steps in. Wow, footwork! <laughs> Young players, watch videos like that. Footwork is the key. Kita mo yung pivot niya, no? Hindi gumalaw. Just stepping up on that shot. Full court press here by DLSU. Lesiones. Pass to Etulie. That's too strong. Agunani again. Cleaning up the boards. Limiting San Beda to one shot at temper possession. Let's see if they can capitalize on the other end. Rubico moves in. The pass. Nahuli ng defensa ng San Beda. Sa Voris Marasigan gets a steal. Voris. Inside the drive and the score. That's the potential of Marasigan, and that's why so many people are excited to see what he can bring to the court. And right now, it's a tight ball game at 35, 3 minutes and 27 remaining in the first. Thirty-five all the score, three minutes and twenty-seven remaining here in the first half of action. Alvin Tanyana together with Naveen Ganglani working the game here in our first game after the 2023 break. Tama. And napakaganda ng pagbabalik nito, champ versus champ to start here. And you can see the fans here. But before we talk about the fans, let's take a look at the leaderboard. As of today, here you can see here Denzel Walker of the UP Fighting Maroons. Leading the league in scoring, King Vinoya with leading the assists, uh, and then Gani Stevens leading in rebounds, and you can see him also leading the blocks. But King Vinoya leading the steals department, and you can see here that UP is leading that 
uh, that statistical category there. Exactly. A lot of talent also in that UP roster to watch out for moving forward. Now, LaSalle, they're starting to get momentum back in their favor with some of their defensive plays, Coach Alvin. And that's good for the DLSU Green Archers. Now, uh, ito, Penny Estacio. Estacio. That is so good, and that's a foul. You don't draw the foul the first time, go for it again. <laughs> and, oh, Penny Estacio holding on once again to his back of his head. And if you can remember the last time that we saw Penny Estacio in a LaSalle jersey was when he injured his head also. Yes. Concussion. Uh, and when he, uh, I think that was against EAC, if I can remember that game. But he was, uh, he fell down hard and he didn't come back. After yes. that was the last time I saw him in a, wear, DLSU, uh, in a DLSU jersey. And also to add to that, Coach Alvin, when that injury happened to him, he was also recovering from plantar fasciitis mm, injury. Yes that limited him and I think all those injuries in the offseason was one were you know the reasons why he was really unable to keep up with the team ramping up to the UAAP season so we hope the best for Penny and we hope he stays healthy because he's an electric young basketball player yes and most especially that Sandeda again needs a point guard for their squad I think Walana is Jacob Cortez so who will step up for them is it going to be AJ Royo is it going to to be their other guards na that will step up. Siyempre, kailangan nila na isang very stable point guard like Penny Estacio. We're seeing San Beda go to a zone now. Nice, oh, nice pass! pass. Nice, nice pass. pass. Bright Noanko has been making some solid decisions today for the Green Archers. And Matt Yukom, Coach Alvin, one of the recruits that Coach Topex personally went to visit in the province after the last NBTC, there's a lot of excitement for this prospect, particularly when it comes to his outside shooting. But right there, he showed that he has the ability to score inside as well, off a nice cut. Yes. Right now, Prince Alao. Pass. JC Makalalag. Makalalag. Pass to Hukong. Makalalag. Shot lang at five. Makalalag shot. That's too strong. Mina with the rebound. Etulia with the ball. Estacio moves in, the jumper by Penny, no. And a loose ball grabbed by the LSU. A minute and 38 remaining. Prince Alao, that is an offensive foul. Great positioning that time. I believe that was Etule who drew the charge. No, that's uh, Tosi. No, that's uh, Teruel. That's Alex Teruel. 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 Yes, Teruel. Positioning himself predicting where Ala would try to attack and taking away that space for him to operate. And now this is the second time that Ala has been called for an offensive foul in this game. Nakita mo na rin yung halo nito, gigil on the drive ni Prince Ala. Penny is Stasha now bringing down the ball. Penny. Give himself here. Etulie to Roldan. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Terwell from three point distance. That is no good. The ball is last touch on Penny Estacio. You see LaSalle when it comes to these ball screen actions, Coach Alvin. They have the big man like Agonane or Bright trying to ice the screen level. And that's a good decision that time by Terwell. He was given the space to shoot. He took it, just did not go in. 37-36, uh, a very close but a slow down pace in the second quarter exactly. for this game. Boris Marasigan, the shot is good. Again, this kid has so much talent in him. And if he continues to lean down and get in UAAP season shape, the sky is the limit. Not a good foul that time by San Agustin. Just getting in the game, you have to be aware. Less than a minute left on the clock. Your team is in penalty situation. Don't foul someone in the backcourt. When you saw itong uh, chance, uh, syempre, when you're given a chance to play, and as a coach, syempre, you, you will not be happy because ang layo eh. Penalty na tayo. Tama. Ang layo pa ng, ng ano, dahil sana hindi mo na final. Tama. Just put up good defense. 
Awareness of situation, yes, game uh, clock, very important qualities can make the difference of a win or loss in a game. And Jeffrey, we all know that Benny Estacio is a very smart guard. Alam niya kung kailan susundot eh. Ito Tama. si San Agustin. Tama. First free throw is good for Penny. As you can see, the, the crowd here inside. A very good yeah, crowd very turnout good crowd, today. yes. Thank you to everyone. I believe the ticket, Coach Alvin, is... 100 pesos. Exactly. So, uh, exciting times ahead for our college basketball. And the timeout is called by the DLSU Green Archers, 39-38. Thirty-nine, thirty-eight. The score, forty-nine point fifty-six seconds remaining here in the first half between the champions of the NCAA and the champions of the UAP, San Beda and DLSU. And Chevrolet, a very special game like this deserves a very special analyst as our resident Woj of Philippine Collegiate Basketball is with us right hey. now, Davin <laughs> <laughs> Ganglani, and it. That, it, it didn't come from me. It came from our founder, the Sir, Be, uh, Sir Benny Benitez, that you are the world of Philippine collegiate ba basketball. As oh, oh nice shot there, right? right Wanko, right, and Wanko with the score inside. And you can see what UAP experience really does, no, Coach Alvin. You yes. timing, yeah, really looking better here. <laughs> Eh, kumbaga may time na. Ito si Brighton Wangko eh. Pag mga ganyan, iaangat niya. But nice fake this time. Tama. Ito, another turnover here for San Bela. Boris Mara, Sigan scores and a foul. And you know, the great LeBron James once said, to win playoff games, to win tough games, you need to close out quarters strong. That is the key. So far, Lasalle closing out this quarter very strong from this game being tied or them being down one. They have a chance to go to halftime up by six. Quick two baskets here for their squad. We came out of the time at 39, 38. Two quick baskets. Let's see if they can add one more here. And they do. It's now up to a six-point lead for the guys from Taft. Let's see if Estasio can draw another foul here with seven seconds left. LaSalle in the zone. Estasio for three. No. Rebounded by Nwanko, and that will end our second quarter of play. The champions of the UAP are on top by six. 44-38, we'll be right back for the halftime sets and the third quarter of action here in your Pinoy Liga Next Man Cup Season 2. Kay sigla ng gabi, ang lahat ay kay saya, naghanda ang...
Maligayang Pasko po mula sa amin sa War Masyak. Kaliga kasama natin ngayon ng assistant coach ng Lasal Green Archers, Coach Joe. Coach, what can you say about the performance of the team so far in the first half? 
Um, right now, uh, to be honest, we're really not satisfied. We're not where we want to be. Uh, we, we're going to make adjustments in the second half, definitely. Um, we just have to be more disciplined on both ends and just keep our uh, uh, focus all throughout the game. And hopefully, we get the win. Coach Joe, nababalita ngayon that you have an additional player for the Lasal Green Archers. Coach, what is the addition of Coach uh, Jacob Cortez meant for Lasal? Um, obviously, it's going to be huge for uh, our team, the school. Um, uh, we're looking forward to having him maybe in the next few days. Nothing is certain really right now. Um, but let's see. Let's see in the coming days if we'll see Jacob here. Coach, is there anyone you want to give a shout out to, especially your supporters who are here in the venue? All right, uh, first off, I uh, just want to say thank you to the Lasal community, um, the bosses, especially the managers and the students and the parents who continue to support us nonstop all throughout, even in the preseason. Uh, very thankful for their support and hopefully moving forward then until the UAAP, well, we continue to see the same faces here uh, that we see in the games. Thank you so much, Coach. We will be back after this short break. We are back here inside the Enderan Gymnasium. We're in the De La Salle. Green Archers have a six-point lead against the San Beda Red Lions. Once again, Alvin Tanyala together with Naveen Ganlangin. Uh, Naveen, what happened dun sa ating first half of action? It was a very close game, but in that last few minutes or that last minute of uh, that first half, it changed a lot. Exactly. Quick start by the DLSU Green Archers. Matthew Rubico gets going early. San Beda catches up with three-point shooting. Good ball movement. Ang ganda ng flow, ng rhythm, ng speed, ng pace of the game in the first quarter. And in the second quarter, we saw the physicality settle in. Early foul trouble for both teams. Turnovers, technical fouls, sportsmanlike fouls, everything. But even if it was a nip and tuck affair, towards the end of the first half, LaSalle pulls away and now they have a six-point lead. Let's take a look at the stats here. You can see the field goals surprisingly the LSU, uh, more more field goals here, 13 out of 16. San Beda only four out of 10. So that's a lot of uh, um, may, uh, a lot of field goals na attempted na hindi nakuha nitong uh, uh, San Beda. But, uh, look at the rebounds; it's still in favor of the LSU. But look, you can just see that it's really more on the free throws for San Beda. Na kung saan lumamang sila. Exactly, and also worth noting the rebounding department for DLSU, Alvin. Towards the end there of the second quarter, one of the reasons why DLSU was able to pull away was because guys like Agunane and Nuanco limited San Beda to one shot per possession, and that led to easy fast break opportunities for the Green Archers. Brian Zahonia led the way with six points uh, uh, in that first half together with Boris Marasigan. Ten points are... Yes. Tahimik yung ten points, eh, but he led the way... Matthew Rubico, uh, eight points also in that first half of action. Effective in the first half of Boris Marasiga, and then a pull-up, drives to the rim, and also getting it done on the defensive end. Now three ball. Eto Lopez also started off well in that first half, but he went out because of that unsportsmanlike foul. And there's the Agunane factor right there. Marasiga pulls up and gets fouled, shooting free throws. Not a good foul by the young kid. Lopez, but those are the situations he will learn from. There's a foul there. Two free throws will be given to DLSU. And 
Morris Marasigan will shoot too. And uh, very much happy to see the fans here inside the Enderan Gymnasium. Dami ng fans na nanonood. And also through Aliyo Channel 23 on a delayed telecast. Mapapanood natin to Sunday ang uh, laro na ito. Exactly. So, and just because tapos ng UAP and NCAA Coach Alvin, that does not mean college basketball has ended. Because oh. we will have more games sa Pinoy Liga next man cup here. As the weeks go by, 100 pesos lang ticket here yes. at Enderon Colleges. We have Ma plans coming up as well. Yes, marami pang teams yung hindi pa naglalaro dito. We're about to see uh, tomorrow the Perpetual Binyan squad uh, will be play will be debuting tomorrow. And we also have not yet seen St. Dominic Pikemen and uh, other teams also. Ateneo has not yet played. Yes. Um, a lot of teams. Even EAC has not yet played. So. Exactly. And take note, the UST Growling Tigers are one of the teams to really watch out for in this tournament. Oh. Given the talent that they have coming in next UAAP season. And I remember uh, covering one of the games of UST. I was excited to see Edozi Fortsky Padrigao uh, really uh, blending in well with the system of uh, Coach Pido Harencio, even though Coach Pido was not there, pero nakita na natin yung, yung kanyang uh, madaling na kapag-adjust siya sa sistema ni Coach Pido. I also want to congratulate Juno Sauler, former head coach of the DLS yes. Masters, now part of the USD coaching staff as an assistant to Coach Pido Harencio. Yes, oh, kasama niya si Coach Peter Martin, exactly. also joining. And ironically, sa 2013, Coach Juno Lasal beat Coach Pido's USD, no? For yes. the championship. Oh, oh. And now this season, they are together to help bring USD back to Final Four contention. And you know what? USD has the roster to be very good. Yes, mas, mas magumanda nga yung lineup nitong USD. Nothing against the last time uh, with Nick Caballero there. But again, this is a much stronger yes. UST lineup for the upcoming season. So excited na lahat ng and, mga taga uste for this season. And Nick Caballero, Christian Manaytay, these are guys still expected to be back with this new UST lineup as well. So it adds to the talent. That's a miss there, Jake Gaspai with the rebound. Great rebound the time by Gaspai. Malakas siya, no? Yung upper body strength niya. Ito, sampu na ang lamang dito. And that is an offensive foul called on uh, Bright and Wanko. Exactly. That time, Bright and Wanko had the right intentions. But you need to have good timing with your ball handler when he's asking for a screen. You have to be set when you set that screen. Otherwise, the refs are going to catch that all the time. Joe Celso gives it up. Brian Sahonia. Sahonia finds a teammate. Oh, that steal by Matthew Rubico. Matthew, shot, no good. Send the second serving. There's a foul. You know, maganda kay Rubico, Coach Alvin, is yung reflexes niya work very quick. No? When he, he sees a play happen before it happens, particularly on the defensive end, and he can move his body very fast to create passing lane uh, to be able to disrupt passing lanes force turnovers and also score on the other end now matthew rubico first free throw is good for the former lyceum junior pirate and he looks like he grew a few inches since the last time oh, we saw him yes. yep and, uh, and sometimes that's what red shirting can do for you yes now here's my Sonkuya. Maynard gives up to Brian Saonia, two former FEU Tamaraus. Joe Celso. Brian. Inside to Joe Celso. Celso moves out. Shot from three. No rebound. Maynard Sonkuya. Hule. Le Bright and Wanko. Lopez, no good. And, and Wanko with another board. Exactly. And right there, that's when they say you can't teach height. Makalalag for three, no good. And again, Bright Noanko, superb effort play. He has been sensational in this game for LaSalle. Nice pass inside, Traveling. but that's travel. Good intentions at time by Rubico to get it to Gaspai. And Gaspai, that's the second time now that he faked attack, but instead get call, gets called for a yes. travel. Yes, oh, kanina first half sa three-point arc. Ngayon, ito mas malapit. Exactly. But Bright Noanko has been terrific here. Not in scoring, but in his defensive plays, 
with his rebounding and the dun effort, dun dun. the energy, yes, exactly. Songkuya. Pass here, Lopez. Lopez moves in. Lopez, no good. And again, no anchor right away. Cleaning up the board. San Beda being limited to one shot per attempt. And that's really allowing LaSalle to play with pace and offense. Marasigan for Mara three. Oh. Bam! Ito yung magic bunot ni coach. Oliver Bunye making good plays here for the DLSU Green Archers. They are on top by 14, 52-38. Taking a look at our team standings here for your Pinoy Liga next man cup season two presented by the Shawarma Shack. You can see the LSU not yet played, has not yet played. And uh, kasama nila sa bracket na yun, uh, EAC Generals. And uh, yeah, there you go. And also kasama nila St. Dominic uh, College Pikemen. You can see Adamson 0 and 2, San Beda 1 and 0. Oh. So they want to still be on top of the uh, team standings. And look at that bracket. A very yes. strong bracket there yes. on that left side. This is the Mapua 1 0, UB, University of Batangas, which will play tomorrow 1 0. Ateneo, wala pa. UE, hindi pa rin naglalaro. Perpetual Binyan, hindi pa rin naglalaro. Pero UP 1 1, AU 1 1, and Lyceum 0 and 2 on the right side. But that left side. Yep. Naveen is a very strong bracket. Exactly. A lot of quality teams once again in this tournament. Speaking of quality, Coach Alvin Bright Noanko is telling the LaSalle staff right now, hey, I'm still here. I still want to be the FSA for season 87. Yes. You know, Voris Marasigan has been hot here. 15 points for Voris Marasigan. He is on fire, Coach Alvin, and he's doing it efficiently. Great jump shooting today. As oh. again, Noanko. <laughs> Erasing everything at the rim. Offense by Voris Marasigan. Defense by Bright Anwanko. What can you not go wrong here for DLSU? And now Penny Estacio trying to slow the pace down a bit for San Beda. Set the ball, get good shot attempts because everything has been LaSalle since the start of the third quarter. Torres, no fact, good. San Beda hasn't scored yet in her yes. halfway through the third quarter. Yeah, we uh, we had uh, we came out of the timeout by De La Salle, 39 34, and then that's 15 to 0 run here. Exactly. Para dito sa De La Salle. Exactly, and this has been dominant by La Salle. And it's in large part due to this man who is about to take a breather, Voris Marasigan. Oh. His scoring prowess has been in full display the last few minutes of this basketball game. Take note. They don't need the offense of the other players. JC Maalalag, tahimik na. Matthew Rubico, tahimik din. Mm -hmm. Hindi na kailangan muna dito. But Voris Marasigan and Brighton Wanko doing it on the offense and defense exactly. for the LSU. And like Alao, like Rubico, like Ethan Alian, Marasigan was not lined up in season 86. So he spent the last year training with the Green Archers, improving, and by the time he enters the LSU's lineup in season 87, he is not going to be your typical rookie. Talaga hindi siya typical rookie, but you can see here, some of these players, nabugbog din naman yan eh. Because Sama. remember in the, in the finals of uh, the LSU, ang nakakalaban ito sa training, ito Team B. Yes, exactly. Shot from three. Daha, no good. Rebound. Rubico, his version of a three, no good. Rebound. The look at Bright and Wanko. Wow, and that's going to lead to another best possession, I believe, for De La Salle University. Bright and Wanko on the floor right now. And ito, eh, may term tayo sa Tagalog dito, nagpapakamatay sa bola. Yes. Ito yung ginagawa ni Bright and Wanko. Now, Hukom will check in. 
Replacing uh, JC Makalalag. Who come another one, like we mentioned, of the young recruits of DLSU that the team is very high on. This Del DLSU squad is very deep for the upcoming UAP season. Naveen, ah, you can, wala pa ka dito, again, wala pa si, uh, wala pa si Ma, uh, la Mike Phillips, sila KQ, yes. sila Escandor, wala pa yan, pero isipin mo kung nandito pa yung ilan sa mga players na nag-perform well in that finals. Eh, this is a very strong team and uh, Coach Topics will have a very, uh, mag maganda yung problema ng ito, eh, no? Yep, yep, exactly. And wala pa nga some of the guys who will play in this tournament as well, like EJ Goliena, Earl Abadam, and a lot of the other talented prospects of this De La Salle program. But that is a traveling violation. And if you're hearing the DLSU coaching staff right now, they're telling their players, shoot it. Yes. Shoot it. Like the ball movement has been solid, but if you have an opportunity to shoot the ball, the DLSU staff wants their players to let it fly. And with a 16 point lead, why not? My go signal to, 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 yes. get to shoot the basketball. Why not? 54 38 still. A 16 point advantage here. Estacio. Gives it up to Mina. Mina. Shot. And still no good for San Beda. That's now nearly, that's now more than six minutes of scoreless basketball for San Beda. Estacio. Oh, it's still no good. Exactly. And that's a bright Nuanco factor right there. There's a foul there. Now that's fouled downstairs. What you can <laughs> see here, Dito. I mean, yung takbo ng Lasal, eh, no? Alam nila. Na, ah, kaya na nila umarangkada dito. Yes. They are really running at every moment here. And I think Lasal has to get the ball to Nuanco here in the post. He seems, he's providing the effort on defense, but he seems like he wants the ball on offense for a chance to maybe show what he's capable of. But there's a foul there on Rubico. Oh, take a lang. Okay, warning muna on Matthew Rubico. So Rubico checks out now. Ethan Alian back in. During the halftime break, I saw him nursing a busted lip. I think he got hit with an elbow in the first half. Oh, yung but drive kanine, yung exactly, drive. but he's back in action now. Let's see what he's capable of showing. Let's show this now. The LaSalle defense has been on point. San Beda finding little to no openings here in the third quarter. Nina for three. Finally, making their first basket in about about seven minutes. Nearly eh. seven minutes, yeah, yes. A much needed minutes, basket yeah. for San Beda. You see, Noanko now gets the ball here in the post. Let's see what he does with it. And Wanko, no good. Rebound. Last touch on uh, Zedetulio. So you're, you mentioned earlier, Coach Alvin, a lot of the plays that LaSalle was running was with their big guys out in the yes. perimeter, handoffs. Now you see that the Green Archers are trying to run some of their actions with their big men closer to the paint. And that, that's a nice find inside. Bright and Wanko sees that he can really play inside the, against Neto Torres and Etolie. And wait a minute, let's see. Exactly. And... You know, just taking note of the future of the Green Archers, Coach Alvin, no? imagine all the rim protection they're going to have with the likes of Mike Phillips, with Kevin Kiambao also playing solid defense, and whether that's Nuanko or Agunane. The defense of the Green Archers was the biggest reason why they won that last UAP championship. Yes, the defense, because eh. if you can remember that game one in the finals, they were going to win the UAP fighting Maroons. But you saw the difference in game number two and game number three yes. when the defense really stepped up for the DLSU Green Archers. Oh, good defense once again by DLSU. There are a lot of talented defensive guards in this DLSU lineup. Alao, Rubico, Alian. And that's going to fit right in with the kind of pressure scheme that Coach Topex likes to run with these Green Archers. And we all know Coach Topex was a 
pit bull of a point guard yes. in his heydays with the San Sebastian, uh, with the PBA also. So, andun yung defense mentality ni Coach Topex. And kailangan, yun yung matutunan din itong mga guards nila dito as Alian moves out. Alaw for three. That's strong. Rebound by Daha. Daha for three. Oh, that's in and out. Fast break for the Red Lions. Lashones. Pass. Oh, another turnover. Kukom moves in. Nice pass. Oh, Alaw. And somewhat like a pinball yung nangyari doon. Exactly. And San Beda being in penalty possession, but penalty right now means free throws for the Green Archers. And one thing LaSalle is doing so much better here in the second half, which is why they've been able to build this lead, is because they're getting back down in transition. Those easy opportunities, kick outs, early points for San Beda, not as available as it was in the first period. Now Prince Alo makes his first free throw. The hesitation din kasi nitong yep. uh, San Beda ngayon to make those baskets. And that's 2 for 2 for Prince Alao. Let's see if Sahonia tries to play more on ball here, Coach Alvin. It feels like he's been quiet for a while and yes. San Beda needs his creativity and penetration. Napakatahimik na nito ni Brian Sahonia. And now full court press once again for DLSU. And I missed uh, saying that full court press because we all know that De La Salle is known for that full court press in exactly. their heydays. Sahonia, look at the defense. Estacio for three. No, but there's a foul. And that's going Alaw. to be called against the Green Archers, if I'm, I'm not mistaken. And now they are going to be in penalty as well. So San Beda, which more than eight minutes into the third quarter, has scored only three points. Finally going to get a chance to add more points to the board. Prince Alao will be called for that. Now Volis Marasigan goes back in here. Then Atulia will shoot too. First free throw, in and out. So, dagdag mo pa yung free throw misses nito. Yes. And while we get a little break here as Etuele takes the free throws, we want to thank the hard-working staff of the Pinoy Liga team, of course, behind the scenes, always making sure that the games are prepared for. Yes, yeah, syempre. Syempre, direct, direct uh, Lemuel Puno nandyan, syempre. Si Boss CJ Yang, of course. Syempre, Boss Richie. Anjan din, mga and, boss natin. And of course, ang pinakagwapong boss, si Boss Benny Benitez. <laughs> Sir Benny there. And ito, Hukom uh, finally hits his first three-pointer. Let's see if Sahonia can penetrate here. Nuanco waiting for him. Oh, good pull-up. Short lang. Wala A lot yun. of these pull-ups ng San Bedan this quarter, Coach Alvin, napapansin mo, medyo short sila, no? Yes. And I have to wonder if the defensive pressure, particularly the press of LaSalle, is leading to those tired legs of the Red Lions. Oh, na, 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 in, in, term, uh, in short, eh, nagulantang sila dun sa press bigla, eh. Kasi kanina hindi naman nagpa-press yung LaSalle. Tama. And now, inside, ooh! Is that, is that an assist or... <laughs> angat ng bola eh, sobre. Well, if tanungin natin si Ethan Alian, he'll say, ah, for sure, assist yun. Hello, yun, Estacio. That's a foul. And you know, worth noting also, one of the reasons why these DLSU guards are allowed to be so aggressive, going for the steals, forcing turnovers, is because they know that even if maiwan sila, Bright Noang for Henry Agunane is there in the paint waiting to protect the rim. First free throw for Penny is good. Only five points for San Beda here in this quarter. Estacio looking to make it six. That's good. Marasigan back in the contest. I believe he's the leading scorer of this game right now. Yes. Oh, that's traveling. Nag-slip kasi yung pivot eh. 
Need an exactly. alien don, yes. Exactly. And there's one area that young players take a little while sometimes to get used to. Now San Beda looking for that 2 for one but that's another foul. So that's two errors there already for Ethan Alian. That uh, traveling violation and now that foul. And not to mention the last foul that led Estacio to free throws was also from Alian. So aggressiveness is good, but of course, has to be controlled aggressiveness. And Lopez will check back. And another player that has been silent here is this guy Lopez because the two threes that he hit in that opening quarter to start the matchup. Exactly, and I like what Coach Oliver just did right now. Instead of scolding Alian or getting mad at him, he was patient with him, trying to teach him what he did wrong, what he should avoid next time. And you know, Coach Alvin, that's what these tournaments are here for, to help develop the players in preparation for the big leagues. And also, in addition to that, the assistant coaches, the, we see the development of the assistant yes. coaches in preparation to, uh, in the season. Because sometimes, the head coaches are the ones that are the one heated up. You need to have an assistant coach that is very calm and collected. Oh, nice move by Ukom. That's now 10 points for Ukom, if I'm not mistaken. So a solid outing. Speaking of solid, Marasigan continues to fill up the highlight reel. Last shot time for them. Boris. Marasigan going one-on-one -on -one against Sahonia. Three ball, no good. Rebounded by Estacio. Estacio looking for one shot. And that is no good as we end our third quarter of action. It's the UAAP champions, Del Sol Green Archers, on top here by 17 against the NCAA champions, San Pedro Alliance, 63-46. Talking about winning, yes, teams in college basketball. No teams can, can be not talked about that one of those teams are De La Salle Green Archers. Absolutely, and you can look at some of their championship teams over the years. The Ben Mbala era, the Jeron Teng era, the Renan Retualo era, the Kevin Kiambao era, Rico Meyerhofer and JV Casho. A lot of great <laughs> players, great yes. coaches over a long, long period of time. And even, they even had the, the championship ring ceremony. Yes. And I think last year, they gave them the championship rings, the champion teams. So that is how they want to value the, the players that brought uh, the championships to their school. And that's the players that brought the championships to their school. Even in the, uh, for the UAP, as we start the fourth quarter, another turnover and for right, San Beda. And also right away, La Salle goes to a zone defense to start the fourth period, leading to the turnover. And who come no good to the three? Forward pass, Zed Etulie. Defense is there already. Outside, Estashom. In and out for three. Lapit na. And now let's see. Brighton Wanko is out. But you do have Henry Agunane in here for DLSU. Let's see if he can duplicate what he's done with Bright and Wanko in the third quarter. Voris Marasigan, that's a money three. And you know the boy is confident when he missed the shot in the third quarter. And right away, start the fourth period, he's like, yep, I'm taking this again. <laughs> and that's the confidence given to him by Coach Oliver Bungi. 
Sabi mo nga kanina, si Ethan Alian, hindi niya pinagalitan, binigyan niya ng, uh, binigyan niya ng mga instructions. And now, Boris Marasigan also given instructions here. And look at him playing one-on-one -on -one here. That pass, but that is a turnover there for Boris. And that's a turnover, or rather, no, last touch there for DLSU. So, Coach Alvin, entering the third quarter, the score was 44 to 38. Since then, 22 to 8 advantage yeah, for the Green Yeah, 32 to 8. And take note, Sun Beda at one point in the second quarter was already ahead by four or five points, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that's that's right, uh, Naveen. So, so this has been a 25-point turnaround. And even take note, 16 to nothing run. Yung pinakawala nila in that uh, third quarter. So, this is a very hot DLSU squad to start the second half. So, let's see if they can continue that here in the fourth quarter. Matthew Rubico, nice pass inside. Ago, nane fouled. And Wala na magagawa si Maynard sa kuya doon. And good decision the time by Rubico attacking with the intent to get the ball to his big man, knowing right away that he was able to get an early seal and early advantage in the paint. And one of the jobs of the point guard is to reward the big man on offense, particularly for all the efforts he plays with on the other end of the court. Henry Agunane. The good thing for Henry Agunani is he's a much better free throw shooter than Bright and Wangko. You see the, the flick on the wrist? Mm -mm. I think at this point, his shooting touch is a little more than Bright. But I feel like Bright's patience in the yes, paint is yes. a little more developed than Henry right now. Yun yung pinagkaiba nila eh. Patience. And, and the, uh, even Bright and Wangko is a much bigger body, you know? Than, yeah. uh, Henry Agunani. Rubico moves inside. Not a pick. Ogana gets the ball. Shot. Rubico. That's money for Matthew Rubico. Big time shot by Rubico. Repositioned himself after getting in the paint and momentarily losing the ball. Open three pointer and sinks it in. Uh, three ball there by Brian Sahonia. <laughs> And I'm really surprised that we haven't seen us right away. LaSalle scores off a made Stan Beda shot. That's Ambilis. one of the areas that will drive a coach crazy. Ang bilis nung ano, you know, nung mahabol agad. This zone defense of LaSalle, very interesting that they decided to go here. Stan oh. Beda though cannot capitalize. Nah, no good still. Another one, still no good. And you can see Estacio. In the first half, we talked about how he was really looking to set up his teammate. That is a nice job by Henry Agunani. Agunani might have gotten away there with a little something-something, yes. but still gets a basket to go. But we're seeing some a penny stash here in the second half, looking more for his shot, Coach Alvin. Yes. Oh, ito naman yun. Brian Sahonia has been silent here. Ogana, shot, no good. Oh! DLS, you really pushing the pace on offense. Particularly off the miss and better shots, even the made ones. And the uh, Pagnaita nila talaga opportunity to get that uh, fast break. It exactly. out of you can see that they scored on the other end. The gulat tayo nandun na sa kabila agad. Eh. Right. And that's one of the areas of the zone defense that can that allows you to do. No? If the shot is from the wing or closer to the baseline, the guards playing up top on defense can run down right away for easy scoring opportunities. Estacio, back to Sahonia. Pass. And look at the long arms of Henry Agonani. Stopping that. And Agonani gets the ball. And there's a foul on Brian Sahonia. And that's going to be the second team foul of San Beda. This quarter, the lead has expanded to 24 points. Only 13 second half points for the Red Lions in this game. That's very low. You know? Eh, you were aganda no simula ninyo in the first uh, in the first quarter exactly. pero pababa eh yung uh, takbo ng puntusan niyo in the uh, entire game 
and it all started with better rebounding from DLSU, limiting the red lines to one shot per possession, controlling the pace of the game, controlling the flow of the game. Not, not just the, de the defense, but also, uh, not just the rebounding, but the defense itself. Ang laki ng bagay ni yes. Labright and Wanko. Yung nandepensa nitong sila, uh, ano, ilang mga, sa mga, mga players nila dito for DLSU. Exactly. And Marasigan also really yes. getting going on offense, allowing LaSalle. Remember, we said one of the areas to winning a basketball game is closing quarter strong. LaSalle closed at quarter very strong. Went up by six at the end of the first half, and they just never looked back from there. Now 3.6 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Agunane inside. Agunane might have been motivated by seeing how well Bright Nonko was playing last quarter, now really oh. making a name for himself here as well. So we, you pull out one FSA, you bring in another FSA, and it's still the same. Exactly, and that's the value of height and length. And uh, look and see here, he can really also run there, but exactly. the, the defense was fast. just there. Lopez, pass here to Lesiones. Lopez on the right side, the defense is there by 10. There's a foul at Rinig na Rinig yung palo na yun ni Agonane. Exactly, and that time if you're Agonane, you have the height advantage, you have the length advantage. There's no need to go for the region foul. Now Zamora, another new player here, will check in. But before that, timeout is called by the San Beda Red Lions. This is already a big 26-point lead, 77-51. Taking a look at the last game of San Beda, that is a demolition against the Adamson Soaring Falcons, 71-54. As you can see the numbers here, Naveen, more field goals by San Beda. And the third quarter was a special there for San Beda, 27-13. But you can see there, RC Kalimag was the biggest factor there. Exactly, the Kalimag brothers not in action today, and it was clear that San Beda really missed their scoring output. I was told that the reason why they didn't play today was because they just arrived yeah, in the they U.S., so still fighting jet lag a little bit, but they should be back in action in San Beda's next contest. Yes, and uh, again, missing the services of the Kalimag brothers, missing the services of Bismarck Lina. So these are three players na. Uh, important eh, dito for San Beda. Very true. Of course, Lina should be one of the players to watch out for when he makes his San Beda debut in season 100. One of those young Spitfire guards here for Coach Yuri Escueta. Makalalag, second free throw. We're also seeing now the debut of Rocco Zamora, who yes. played for the Sal Green Hills, of course, the son of former Green Archer Francis Zamora. And Sigurado, very proud to see uh, si Mayor Francis Zamora yep. to see his son finally step in and continue the legacy of the De La Sal. And, and you're five pounds of Senle Agunane. Yun lang yung medyo nagiging ano sa kanya, you know? the, the negative part of his game is his fouling. Madalas siya na-foul out eh. Precisely. And if you're going to play in the UAAP or any collegiate league, you need to stay on the floor. Availability is one of the best abilities you can have. And if you get a chance to play in the UAP, you'll go up against the likes of Ghani Stevens. Yes. The likes of uh, the other players, the big men, di ba? 
Important. Kings Leo Dodo. Yeah, Kings Leo possibly. Dodo for UP, possibly. And that will be an exciting Twin Tower combination, you know. For Peter Osang, maybe, of USC. Yes. A lot of players there. Mina moves in. And the defense of LaSalle continues to create turnovers all game long. And you can see the bench, the players on the DLSU side really rooting for their teammates to keep their foot on the gas pedals. Makalalag scores with the left hand. Yeah, it's JC Makalalag scoring there. Mina outside Lashones. Three ball, no good. And you can see here that Sanbeda has really struggled here. Oh, nice defense once again by Bright. We're seeing like a mean version of Bright Nwanko in oh, this yes. game. And by mean, I, I'm referring to his defensive intensity on the court. Shot by Lopez, no good. Torres, oh look at that, another good defense there by Bright Nwanko. Exactly, Bright Nwanko is erasing everything in the paint. We are talking about the offense of Boris Marasigan, but how about this shot? No good by Zamora. But the question will stand is, yes, Boris Marasigan scored well, but where will LaSalle be without the defense of Bright, uh, Bright and Wango? That's a shot there by Mina. As we are about to enter the twilight zone here already. And by the things looking here, Naveen, it looks like that De La Salle will take home their first victory here in your uh, Pinoy Liga Next Man Cup. Exactly. A dominant second half effort from the Green Archers as they commit a foul to get the other guys off the bench on the court. But yes, the defensive intensity, Coach Alvin, limiting Sanbeda to one shot at temper possession, forcing turnovers, mixing up their coverages, hedging on pick and roll, leveling the screen, switching, and then going zone in the fourth quarter. The versatility that Coach Topix's has main lineup wants to play with, you're seeing it with these green archers as well. As we enter the last two minutes of this matchup brought to you by the Pinoy Liga Cup merchandise purchase via the Pinoy Liga Cup Lazada and Shopee store. Page or message us through the Pinoy Liga Cup messenger for inquiries and and po ang score in 82-60. Lesiones to Pascual. Now the question will that I will again ask you Naveen is Voris Marasigan scored yep. well here all throughout. But where will LaSalle be without the nice defensive uh, play of Bright and Wanko? Exactly. And we also have to credit the playmaking of Matthew Rubico. His defense in the perimeter as well. It was a team effort for the Green Archers. And if you're Sanbeda, to some degree, going cold at the wrong time really did them in. But also, they probably could have done a better job generating better looks here in the third quarter. And you know what? They were also missing a couple of key guys. Yeah. So that should improve in the next game. But a lot of learning lessons from this contest for the Red Lions. And exciting to see the next game of De La Salle. Hopefully we get to see. Hopefully we hope we hope to see. Yeah. Jacob Cortez finally suit up with the green and white squad. While for San Beda, back to the drawing board. Hopefully, we get to see uh, the Kalimag brothers mm -hmm. be and back here. And Mark Lina also. Hopefully, yes. Along with Sahonia and Estacio and Lopez. And this new generation of Red Lions looking to continue a winning tradition. 26 seconds remaining. And uh, San Beda will now fall down to 1-1. One and one. While for the LSU, they will get their first win in the tournament. And Sanbeda will uh, try to make one more basket here. Shot from three, no good. And Gaspai with another board. And that will be it here as the UAAP champions, De La Salle Green Archers, takes home the victory against the NCAA champions, 82-60. Great effort by both teams in the first half. 
towards the end of the second quarter. DLSU starts to pull away. And when the third quarter opened, they controlled the pace early. They never let go of the rope. They stayed in control. And they opened their Pinoy Liga next man cup of campaign with a solid victory. And uh, the defending champions and also, listen, just to let everyone know that the San Beda Red Lions are also the defending champions of your next man cup. So for sure they want to get back on the winning track on the next game. Once again, our final score is 82-60 in your uh, loan game. As uh, when we come back, we will have our best player of the game interview, and me and Naveen will close things out.
final score natin, it is 82 or yeah, but again, DLSU taking home the victory here, our best player of the game, Boris Marasigan, with 22.7 rebounds, one assist, two steals. And uh, right now, kasama na ng ating uh, CJ ang, ang ating best player of the game, Boris Marasigan. CJ? Okay, mga kaliga, kasama natin ngayon ng ating Antbox, best player of the game, Boris Marasigan of the Lasal Green Archers. Boris, it's a big win for you. Uh, ngayon yung first game nyo dito sa Pinoy Liga, Next Man Cup Season 2. How were you able to pull away from a tight first quarter then biglang nag-blow out? Uh, nung first quarter po kasi, uh, big, medyo nabigla po ako and may, meron, po, meron po akong ubo and para pong hira, nahirap, nahirapan na kuminga. Tapos nagpalabas po ako, sabi, sabi ko po sa coach ko, babalik po ako ng second quarter. Tapos po binigyan po ulit ako ng chance na bumalik po. Tapos, Sabi ko po, kaya ko po, tapos ginawa ko naman po yung best ko. Boris, kanina may tinignan ka nung after mo mag-shoot nung 3 points. Para kanino yun? Tinignan. Yung para sa mga teammate yun. Boris, meron ka bang gustong batiin, especially yung mga supporters nyo na narito sa venue? Uh, napapasalamat po kay Lord. Uh, tsaka po sa mga Lasal, sa Lasal community and sa mga coaches na nabibigay tulong sa amin, sa, sa mga teammates ko, and sa family ko, and sa girlfriend ko. Thank, thank you so much, and back to you, Alvin. Thank you very much, CJ. And again, our final score, you can see there, it's 82-60, our final score, 22.7 rebounds. Again, one assist, two steals for Boris Marasigan. And yan yan, nagtatapos ang ating... Uh, First game of our double header, but you can see here our game tomorrow. Uh, it's a, an exciting matchup between two teams outside of the UAAP and the NCAA, the University of Batangas Brahmans, and the Perpetual Help Binyan Altas. It's an exciting game tomorrow, uh, Naveen. Exactly, an opportunity for basketball fans in the Philippines to spot new talent worth watching and some of the other players who might not be so known but have the potential to perform exciting on the basketball court. And a special shout out also, ngayon lang natin nalaman, birthday pala, dito ni Henry Agunane. So, happy birthday to Henry Agunane. And, syempre, and syempre, maraming salamat din sa inyong panunood ng inyong uh, laro for your Pinoy Liga. Wait, Next Coach Alvin, to. before we go, let's greet you a happy birthday also. <laughs> happy birthday to our very own Coach Alvin. Thank, thank, thank you, you for spending much. your day with us. <laughs> And siguro mag-share kayo ni Henry ng birthday cake na kinakain nila right now. <laughs> Thank you very much, Naveen. And it was re really uh, fun well, working with you once again uh, here. Uh, pero hindi pa po tayo tapos sa araw na to for your Pinoy Liga Basketball. But... For Naveen, syempre, thank you very much for working this game with me sa uh, mamaya sa ating pagbabalik. The PLC Clubs naman po ang ating lalaro in the quarterfinals is up in that level. And once again, for the entire hardworking men and women of your Pinoy Liga Cup, for our courtside reporter, CJ Ang, for our director, Lemuel Puno, and for my partner, Naveen Ganglani, this is Alvin Tanyada, and we'll see you later for more of your Pinoy Liga. Next Man Cup Season 2, presented by the Shawarma Shack, number one.